A couple of days ago, on a Kotlin conference in Denmark, JetBrains has announced above 80 new features and improvements that uh, comes with a new Kotlin 2.0 release. The language is uh, growing pretty fast. In this video, I will quickly introduce you with uh, some of the most important updates that you need to know about. Stay tuned! One of the first things that caught my attention in this new Kotlin release was an introduction of extensible data arguments, which is represented through the new data arg keyword in Kotlin. Yay, we got a new keyword, right? But what does it mean? What problem does it solve? And how can it help us to make our code more concise? Well, first, let me start from explaining the current issue that we have. Let's take a lazy column composable for example. It's a well-known UI function with a bunch of different parameters that are available for a customization. Such functions heavily utilize the use of parameters with a default values, to avoid a lot of overloads that are required to cover for all those cases. But what if we decide to add a new parameter to this function? We would have to add a new overload to support the backward compatibility. New overloads also means that we need to duplicate all the documentation for all existing parameters, which introduces a lot of repeating stuff. If you take a closer look at the function definition of a lazy column, you will notice that those parameters are mostly used to add the various customization options. And that's where the new extensible data arguments concept comes into play. JetBrains wants to allow you to create a new class with a data R keyword to mark that class as a holder of all those customization arguments that you may have. This can result in an easier maintenance and functionality extension of your existing APIs. They want to leave a door open for a library authors to have a full control over representation of their arguments. By skipping an explicit creation of such classes at the call site. Which means, when you call a lazy column with this new argument type, you don't have to initialize an additional class, instead you can pass the data arg properties separately, like we did so far. The next great improvement in Kotlin 2.0 is called the guarded condition. It's used to help us check for multiple conditions inside the when block without repeating the state or the variable name. So far, if you wanted to check for multiple conditions in a when block, you would have to repeat the variable name for each separate case. But now, with guarded conditions, we don't have to repeat it anymore. The new feature is gonna get introduced with a Kotlin 2.1 beta version, and with that in mind we can use an if keyword to specify an additional condition all without repeating the variable name. Which is great. The previous example that I have shown you can be improved furthermore, with a context-sensitive resolution. That's another upgrade that we have received from Kotlin 2.0. We can handle instances of a seal types or enums directly without repeating the base class name when expected type is well-known. This makes our code even more shorter than before. The next update is about Kotlin destructing declarations. So previously, we could destruct an object of a data class in a multiple variables, where the name of uh, each variable can be anything you want. But now, with uh, Kotlin 2.0, you can no longer write uh, variable names that uh, are different from the actual property names of that uh, same data class object that you are trying to destruct. With uh, Kotlin 2.0, if you try to write uh, custom variable names here, instead of the actual property names, then you're gonna get a, a compile timer error. However, I have heard that they are also planning to add some kind of a special syntax that will allow you to assign new names to destructing properties. But we will see how that goes. JetBrains also plan on removing component functions for named-based destructoring completely. The next interesting update that you may have already heard about is an introduction of explicit backing fields. The primary purpose of uh, creating two variables, one mutable and private, and the second one uh, immutable and public, is to be able to modify the mutable one only from within the scope of a single class, without exposing its mutability outside of the view model, for example. 
That approach uh, has a few benefits, like encapsulation, immutability, and a controlled modification. By using uh, backing fields, you can encapsulate the internal state of an object, which allows you to control uh, how the state is modified and accessed. Exposing an uh, immutable public property while keeping a immutable private property ensures that the external code cannot modify the property directly, which uh, is maintaining a level of uh, immutability from the outside perspective. And controlled modification means that uh, it allows the class to manage and uh, validate the changes to the property internally, which uh, can be crucial for maintaining consistency and integrity of the object state. This uh, pattern, however, introduced the creation of uh, two different variables. And uh, since we are generally creating uh, and maintaining a lot of different uh, states in our project, this introduced a lot of uh, boilerplate code as well. Luckily, with this uh, new update in uh, Kotlin 2.0, we can declare a single variable instead and uh, cut the boilerplate for uh, almost uh, 50%, which is amazing. The new solution provides uh, an explicit uh, field declaration where we can hold uh, both mutable and uh, immutable state. Mutable state is private and available only within the scope of the parent class. Next, there is also an update uh, related to string literals and uh, string templates. Previously, if you have uh, used a triple quoted string in Kotlin, you couldn't get the reference of a certain variables or properties by using a dollar symbol. It didn't work. However, with a Kotlin 2.0, we can do exactly that with this uh, special syntax by adding uh, two dollar symbols before the starting triple quoted string on the top. Simple and easy. The next update in a Kotlin 2.0 is uh, related to union types for errors. Union types are a feature in some uh, programming languages that allows a variable to hold values of uh, different types. They are used to describe a value that could be one of several types, effectively providing a way to handle multiple types in a type-safe manner. However, in this case, Kotlin doesn't introduce union types in general, only for errors in your code. As far as I understand, its main benefit should be for unchecked casts that we have seen so far in one of those functions like this one. With uh, error union types, we should mitigate that uh, issue of uh, unchecked cast in our code. With this example right here, you can see that uh, we have created an error object that will help the compiler understand the type in our code and uh, automatically cast that uh, to an appropriate value. While we are here uh, talking about uh, smart cast, from a Kotlin 2.0, if you declare a variable before using it in your uh, if, when or a while condition, then any information collected by the compiler about the variable is accessible in the condition statement and uh, it's a block for a smart casting. This can be useful when uh, you want to do things like uh, extract the boolean condition into a variable. Then, you can give the variable a meaningful name, which makes your code a lot easier to read and uh, easily reuse the variable later in your code. For example, in this code right here, we will be able to access an information about the cat class. We can also produce uh, multiple smart casts within a single variable. In this case, the first one is uh, from a type check and the second one is uh, from this uh, is null or empty function. Both of them will be applied to an appropriate block, resulting in a smart cast. Smart casts after a logical operator OR are now possible too. For example, let's say that we have a one parent interface and a three child or a sub interfaces. Previously, the compiler didn't perform any smart casts after a logical operator OR. So, if you check uh, if the variable is uh, either one of those uh, two, we still couldn't invoke the signal function. And with this uh, new Kotlin compiler, we are now able to infer that uh, this variable is the closest supertype of the postpone or decline types, which is the status. Therefore, we can invoke the signal function without any issues. Pretty neat. The next improvement I want to mention here is about uh, making your uh, Kotlin constructs even simpler and uh, safer than before. 
Like for example, we can now create and combine uh, both long and integer literal types with this uh, plus and equal operator without any compile time errors. Because compiler can now desugar this uh, code and then perform uh, all uh, necessary conversions by itself. Even with uh, nullable types, Kotlin compiler can now desugar this code and uh, make uh, safe operations before executing this code. Which in the end makes your code uh, more cleaner. So uh, those were some of the most uh, notable updates uh, for me so far. And there are a lot of more actually, so if you wish to check them in more details, uh, I will leave the link uh, down in the video description. Anyhow, what's your thoughts on these uh, new updates? Do you find them helpful? Do you think that they will increase your productivity even more? Comment down below and let me know. Other than that, don't forget to leave a like, but only if you find this video helpful. Thank you for watching.